coming to y'all live from Nashville, Tennessee. We're going to talk about Contender and Pretender this week. Contender and Pretender. My contender this week is the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Now listen, I wouldn't really give them this unless they were really doing a great job. They've worked their way to 11-0. They're looking at 12-0 if they can knock off uh, the USC Trojans. Really impressed with their defense. I'm impressed with their offense's improvement under Everett Golson, who is in fact from Royal Beach, South Carolina. I look for the Irish to be in the national championship this year and an impressive job by Brian Kelly getting them ready. Our contender is simply anyone who thought they could figure the BCS out. Last week, it looked like we were going to get a clear number one and number two. Number one in Kansas State and number two in Oregon, and they both lose on the same day. Now we've gone from having Alabama completely out of the picture to Alabama being very much in the picture. But how long is that going to stay? Could Alabama lose a shocking game to the Auburn Tigers? And is Notre Dame going to fumble at the goal line against the USC Trojans. No one knows. You can't figure the BCS out, and that's why we have always needed a college playoff in the FBS. Games to Watch. Games to Watch this week follows up from Contendered. Number one, Notre Dame at USC. Now listen, USC is without Matt Barkley. Their offense is going to be hampered a lot without that golden arm of his. However, it's in USC. It's always tough going out to the West Coast for East Coast teams. And Notre Dame has had trouble uh, putting points on the board. However, I think their defense will be able to help hold down a USC offense that will be slowing down a bit. I think Notre Dame will be able to fall the way to finish undefeated and find their spot in the national championship. Our other game that has BCS implications is number four Florida against the number 10 FSU Seminoles. Now look, a couple weeks ago we wouldn't pick Florida in this, but with Jeff Driscoll a little gimme in that offense kind of sputtering last week against the Louisiana Lafayette team that had no business being in that game. I'm really looking for FSU to win this one. I like FSU's offense behind EJ Manuel. I think they'll be able to put some points up on Florida, and I think they'll win in a close game. Ask TJ. For a question of the week this week, since we don't know what to make of the BCS, and since a playoff is the only thing that can make sense of this, TJ, what kind of playoff system would you like to see in the US? Well, I, I espouse the 18 playoff. I know we'll start off with a 14 playoff. I really like eight. I would like to find a way to incorporate the entire uh, BCS bowl system and make it an actual bowl championship series. And so if, if you had eight teams in, you'd have four bowls that would become the first round of that. And to be able to work all four in, I think, would be excellent. You could get all the major conference winners, and you could also have a number of uh, at-large teams as well, and I think it would make for a more full, more complete playoff experience. So would you do a BCS, would it still be the BCS formula or would it be a selection system? Because like the winners of some of the conferences would be outside of that top eight of the BCS. Mm -hmm. I, I think it should go by, I, I really like the selection uh, process. I don't think, the B, if, if it ended up being the BCS selection process for getting into the playoff, I really wouldn't have a great problem in that because at the end of the day we'd still be finishing things with a playoff system. We'd be playing it on the field to determine who goes to the championship. But I, I think the selection committee, uh, I think it just it's what's worked on every other level of college football that uses playoffs, and I think it would work just fine in the FPS. So this season it would be, if we, we did that, it would be Notre Dame, Bama, Georgia, Florida, uh, Oregon, K-State, uh, I guess FSU, and the Whoever last wins one the Big East. Kind of a, Who kind wins the Big East? Probably, probably Louisville? Louisville. Louisville, I mean, you know, kind of... Get blown out by Syracuse, they still got a shot. There you go. That's that's why you play in the Big East. Okay. But uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I think in that, you'd have a lot of problems, and, and going back to that, uh, you'd have a lot of problems with that visa selection right here, because you'd have all these SEC teams that yeah. you would like that. Um, you would want... So of course, in the SEC championship, one of those teams would get knocked down and probably out of the... Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So, selection process probably the best bet. Hometown Heroes. This week for Hometown Heroes is the Palmetto State Showdown between the Clemson Tigers and the South Carolina Gamecocks. Number 12 USC at number 11 Clemson. We're going by the BCS standings. Teach, what do you think is going to happen this week? I think it's going to be a great game. I think it's a, a much more even matchup than it has been the last couple of years. South Carolina has done a good job really uh, taking back some control, some control in the series. Um, I, I think it's going to be a tougher game for them if they want to make it four in a row. It's in Clemson. 
uh, Clemson's offense is just, it's seemingly unstoppable. But, um, they, you know, South Carolina is, is not coming into the game in the end. They have one of the best defenses in the SEC. Um, the offense at times has shown that it can put some points up, and especially against Clemson's defense, I think they'll have uh, some success in scoring points. And Clemson's defense is, uh, well, their best defense has really been their offense this year. So, I, you know, there there's some interesting breaking points to this game. We'll have to see how they turn out. Do you think a lot of people are reading too much into the Walford game last week for South Carolina? Um, I, I think it's okay to read into that a little bit. Um, it, Watching South Carolina play in that game, it was very obvious that there were there were many things that had been uh, staples in the South Carolina offense that were just missing. Um, South Carolina seemed very content to run the ball, um, just to try to control the clock, put enough points on the board. Luckily, thanks to some big plays at the end, they were able to do that. Um, but a lot of key elements to their offense this year, especially tight end passing, were just not there. They weren't even being attempted, and many times I would look downfield and see open tight ends, but. It's, it's almost as if South Carolina didn't want to really give that quite away. Yeah, I don't know if they were trying to fool anybody with that. but yeah. So I, I would I'd be a little concerned if I was a Gamecock fan, but I wouldn't be panicking about it quite yet. Okay. After all, you did get the win. So. That's true. All right, one last question. Since, you know, the two of us are here, we can do stuff like that. Um, what does – what is this a make-or-break game for South Carolina season? Hey, I wouldn't call it a, a – a, Make or break. I mean, obviously, you still win a bowl game after this, even if you lose. Yes. What, yes. what is it? What is this? I think it. I think it's very much a defining game for both Carolina and Clemson's uh, seasons. Uh, neither one will go to their conference championship. Um, however, both of them could find themselves uh, kind of sliding into a BCS spot with a win here. Um, it would, uh, you know, for Clemson, it would be breaking a three-game losing streak against South Carolina. It would be, uh, you know, most wins during a regular season that they've had in a long, long time. For South Carolina, it would be the first time they've had two uh, back-to-back double-digit win seasons. Um, the, you know, four, maybe the second time, I think, in history they've beaten Clemson four times in a row. There's just lots and lots to play for, and I, I you know, I, I say call it make or break, but there's just so much to play for both teams that it's just huge for them. Well, I guess that'll do it. Uh, we'll be back again when bowl season starts, right. I guess. Yep. But uh, live from Nashville, Tennessee. Of course, it won't be live when you're seeing this, but we are live right yep. now. I'm Chris Cox. This is TJ Cofield. Have a safe week and a fun weekend. We'll see you next time.